Well, George, uh, I've known you for about 45 years. Do you remember? Long time. Long, yes, long, I, long time. I met you in California, right. my home state. <laughs> you, you actually sent me a check for my campaign when I was Oh! Running. Yes. <laughs> uh, but anyway, George, uh, currently we are facing a lot of what they're calling anti-Asian attitudes in this country. Uh, going back to when you were a kid, you faced some stuff being uh, hauled off to camp. Can you give us some of your feelings about then and, and now relative to this anti-Asian feeling? It all generates from the same source. The tendency that people have about people that look different. We were Asian, we look different. And to make these sweeping generalizations that have no relation to re reality. The sweeping general, uh, generalization for us was that we are all potential spies, saboteurs, or fifth columnists without any evidence of it. No charges, no trial, just lock them up. What's happening today is the same kind of uh, sweeping generalization uh, with uh, the uh, Asian American hate uh, or uh, against Asian Americans. We had a president who has a has-been now, which I'm glad of, who continually insisted on calling the coronavirus the China virus, the Wuhan virus, or Kung Flu virus. And the masses, the unwashed, were influenced by that. And they are the ones that did the same things that happened to us after Roosevelt's uh, declaration of war. They spat at us and has, uh, harassed us on, on the streets. Uh, they they uh, did horrible things to elderly people. They're cowards to elderly people. And the same thing when uh, that has-been president first got into office, his first executive order was the Muslim travel ban. And the generalization that backed that up was all Muslims are potential terrorists. Whether it's uh, the southern border with the Latinos uh, uh, seeking asylum, it all comes from that stupid racial generalization that the Latinos are drug dealers, um, uh, murderers, and rapists. Right. That's the source of it. So what we've got to do one, the most obvious one, is to educate people. And that's why we're engaged in these conversations. That's why I speak at all these universities. Uh, I, pu I published my autobiography in 1994, uh, my life story. But also, I have currently out now uh, a graphic memoir targeting the young readers, preteen and teenagers, the title is, They Called Us Enemy. We want to educate these people because they're gonna become the, uh, the, the voters of tomorrow. Eventually, hopefully, the mo uh, movers and shakers. They need to grow up knowing this history because I'm uh, still amazed with all the efforts, you with the JACL and you uh, uh, involved in public service, uh, he in the arts, all this uh, uh, effort that we're making hasn't really penetrated. I come across people that I consider well-read, well-informed, uh, literate people. When I t tell them about my childhood uh, incarceration, they're aghast that something like that happened in the United States. Where did you learn to speak English so well? That's another classic one. English is the lingua franca of the world, all over the world, and that's our disadvantage, not the fact that uh, uh, you know, be, uh, a businessman from Japan can come here and read the New York Times uh, uh, op-ed se section. They understand what we're thinking. Or a German businessman uh, from Germany can uh, read the Wall Street Journal op-ed. They are multilingual and they know both their culture and ours, whereas monolingual um, Americans now, not to say that there aren't people that are wonderfully gifted with languages, go to these other countries and they're lost. And so they have a leg up on this. It's, language uh, education is critically important for Americans. For
for us to be more cosmopolitan and uh, uh, able to understand other cultures, not to see them in terms of gross generalizations. Yeah, very good. Now, Kenji, uh, you're a product of Japanese from Japan, parents. How, how was your feeling about this whole issue of internment and sending Japanese Americans to prison camps basically during World War II? Well, it, it wasn't part of my family experience. My mother was from Japan. It came to this country in the 60s. My father's uh, from Oregon, uh, several generations. And uh, so I didn't learn about it. As, as George says, it, 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 this history wasn't well taught in school. I'm a product of those, that schooling. And as I mentioned to him, I, I didn't really understand uh, what happened until I saw the Karate Kid. <laughs> and uh, I, I became more interested and learned more about it. And um, actually, seven years ago, I visited the Minidoka site. Um, That's in Idaho. Yeah, in Idaho. And, and uh, partly on the recommendation of Paul Chihara, uh, whose work will also be on the program tonight, uh, uh, because he, he spent time there. Uh, and that experience uh, was life-changing. Um, it really resonated with me. It, it, it hit home that had I been around 70, 80 years ago, I'd be raising my two little kids there. Um, and that, that was different than uh, thinking abstractly about me before I had a family uh, being in a place like that. To, to think of raising children in, in such a place was, was heartbreaking. Um, and that's the story we have with, with George's uh, very intimate account of, of his childhood. And so I, I kind of feel it's my responsibility to use my art uh, to help tell this story and to help underscore the humanity of it and uh, to help people who uh, weren't aware or um, that affected by the story to to feel it. Now music creates that feeling. Yeah. It's very good. So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, as we look at today's society, uh, the Constitution says we're all equal. Are we getting closer to that, do you think, George? I think we are moving closer to it because of all our efforts here in the arts, in public service, uh, me with my activism, and you with uh, having uh, led the Japanese Amer American Citizens League. We are uh, educating people, uh, and that lesson is being learned by uh, uh, some people. When uh, Trump signed the executive order, uh, the anti-Muslim uh, 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 travel order, the Deputy Attorney General, S uh, Sally Yates, said, I will not defend this uh, executive order. And thousands of young Americans throughout the country rushed to their airports all over the country, many of them lawyers, to provide legal advice or uh, uh, succor or uh, guidance and uh, support. And so it is slowly uh, taking, but it's, it's time consuming and it may, uh, demands great effort from us. But I'm an optimist. I believe in looking forward, but at the same time doing something today, contributing to today so that we ensure that the uh, future will be a better one. You know, you and I are of the age where we've seen some generational changes. Uh, our parents and go back to my brothers and sisters, older brothers and sisters, they were kind of ashamed to talk about camp. Uh, the next generation began to realize that really screwed us up. And then finally, as we get newer generations, they're willing to now stand up uh, for against such atrocities. So hopefully history will be a lesson to our country and to all of us, and particularly motivation to the younger generations to be more vocal, be more active, and participate in 
in uh, avoiding and preventing some of these things that happen. Absolutely. We're now starting to speak out, and that's the important thing. Democracy depends on it, existentially. It depends on people with, with their active participation in uh, society, in the arts, in public service, because those words are noble words in the Constitution or the Declaration of Independence, but they're just words. They take on meaning by, this is a people's democracy. The people have to take on the responsibility. We, as citizens of the United States, all of us, have that responsibility to make those words have meaning. It's our citizens' job. Very good, George. Uh, we have some folks here that have taken on that challenge, that are uh, committed to doing exactly what you're saying. And uh, we appreciate all of you participating today. And uh, hopefully uh, we can motivate a few of our younger folks and even some of our older folks to begin to be more impactful in talking about this injustice that happened. So thank you very much. Thank you.